Hey there, oil enthusiasts! Today, we're diving into the fascinating world of foam sequence testing for lubricating oils. Now, I know what you're thinking, foam. Really? But trust me, this is the kind of stuff that separates the pros from the amateurs. You will see foaming at a level you wish that extra double deluxe premium bubble HD setting on the car wash actually gave. So, let's get into it. First off, let's talk about why foam is the enemy and why you don't want to take a nice relaxing soak in your foamy oil. Imagine your turbine, hydraulic system or engine acting like a frothy pint of beer. Sounds fun, but it's a disaster in the making. Just like that drink your friend shook when you were not looking. Foam can froth over the tank walls of your system, causing slip hazards and making a mess. Excessive foaming can wreak havoc on hydraulic systems, engines, and transmissions. So, understanding how to press pause on your foaming system is crucial. Picture this, air is pumped through an oil sample using a special air stone, not too dissimilar to the ones in your aquarium. We then measure the foaming tendency and stability. The tendency is the amount the oil will foam when given a chance under heavy air entrainment conditions. Stability is how much foam stays at the end after removing the air source. In beer terms, the tendency is the head of the beer in mill after the pint is poured. And stability is after you have left it on the bar for 5 minutes before drinking. We measure these at specific, controlled temperatures and set numbers of times. Sounds like a fun school science experiment, right? Well, it is. The ASTM standards outline four main sequences for this test. Sequence 1 is room temperature testing, which serves as our baseline. Sequence 2 involves high temperature testing at around 93 Celsius or approximately 200 Fahrenheit, and this is where things really heat up. Sequence 3 is a combination of sequence 2 followed by sequence 1 on the same sample, essentially a stress test for your oil first hot then cold. And then there's sequence 4. This is the ultimate challenge, designed for engine oils and transmission fluids and not really used on turbines and hydraulics. We're talking about temperatures soaring up to 150 Celsius, or about 300 Fahrenheit, with about double the airflow. This is the ultimate stress test for your oil's foam resistance and is part of those ACEA and API specs you see on the side of your engine oil top-up bottle. We measure tendency and stability in each sequence. Higher volumes in either category mean it's time to head back to the drawing board for reformulation, perhaps adding a sprinkle of silicone oil anti-foam additive. On used oils, it's usually about identifying the contaminant. So why does this matter? Well stop thinking of foam like this for starters. These tests help us weed out the oils that are prone to turning your machinery into a bubble bath, and no, not like the one I just showed you. You don't want foam, trust me. Foam is mostly air and air is a poor lubricant and won't separate those metal surfaces and stop them touching and causing wear. So there you have it folks. All this talk of foam has made me dig out the bubble bath. Safe in the knowledge that foam sequence testing is keeping foam out of my oil, so I can enjoy it in my bathtub. It's not just about numbers. It's about preventing real-world disasters caused by foamy oils. If you've got more questions or other topics you'd like us to delve into you can read about them on learnoilanalysis.com. You can also read about our specialist extra foam test called HFOAM, developed by our lab as an additional test of your oil's propensity to foam, all on learnoilanalysis.com. Also, feel free to drop a comment below and let us know what you would like our next video to be on. Until next time, keep those oils foam-free.